join me with it, just a little direction on there. I'm going to be playing eight sets of chords in the beginning, and then in between the verse, I'm going to be playing four sets of chords, so I'll lead you in on it. together on Psalm 43. And today is the day. It's called Good Shepherd Day. All the readings are towards that. Yesterday, I had an opportunity to attend a memorial service at Calvary Hospital in Bronx, where I am serving as a chaplain intern. And uh, during the service, one lady by name Joy came and played a different type of an instrument, which I would like to show you the video. It's a short one. Basu? Yes. Uh, volume, please. This is the video that I took yesterday. So it's so I'm not sure we do.
Do you know the name of the instrument? Anyone? Heart. Heart is the name of the instrument, and this is the one King David played. King David played this heart, and he composed all the songs together. And Psalm 23 is one of them. That's the reason I wanted to show this video to you. And last week, in an antique auction, I bought a small heart. This is a big one. I bought a small one. This is the heart. It's called heart. And hopefully, one day I will learn and play like King David played. <laughs> okay, if you want to take a good look, closer look, you can take it from me after the service. Okay, that's about the Good Shepherd Sunday, but the topic that uh, is today is God as Mother. And I've taken a passage from Isaiah 66, verse 13. Let me read it for you. As a father comforts a child, so I will comfort you. As a mother comforts a child, so I will comfort you. I'd like to wish all the mothers, mothers are taught, mothers to be a happy Mother's Day, everyone. Years ago, there was a young mother, and she was traveling across the hills of South Wales in England. This is a true story. She was traveling. She was carrying, carrying her tiny baby in her bosom. But unexpectedly, all of a sudden, there was a big snowstorm happened. She was caught in between the snowstorm. But what she did, she ran her baby and put her inside her coat and just sat in a location. The snow kept on pouring on top of her and completely buried her. And after some hours, the rescue team went and found her inside the heap of the snow. They found her inside. She then took her outside. She removed all her outer clothing in order to wrap her baby. And you know what? They found the baby alive after so many hours, but the mother was dead. And the child was none other than David Roy George. And he lived to be the Prime Minister of India. You can go Google it. His name is David Roy George. And what a, what a sacrifice of the mother made him as a Prime Minister. And he was the Prime Minister when the World War first happened. And he was the one who led the glorious victory for India. This is the love of the mother. The love of the mother never exhausted, never exhausted. It never changes, it never tires, and it endures forever as long as she lives. And some of the testimonies that we heard from people at the Bible study, they, they say that their mother keeps talking to them here. Whatever the advices they receive from the mom, it keeps on coming back to you again and again and says to you what to do and what not to do, how to take decisions. And that's our mother. And Mother's Day is the day that we honor and remember our mother. Whether they are alive or whether they are in the heaven, but they are all smiling from the heaven and that, that they be celebrated and remembered that. Okay, later in uh, 
1600s in England, there was an annual observance. They called it as, called it as Mother Mary Sunday. This is the history how the Mother's Day came into existence. And they started celebrating on the fourth Sunday in the Lent. They called as Mothering Sunday, where all the servants will take off. What's going on with my mind? Check. So the servants will live with their employees will be taken off. To, in order to go to their native places to celebrate the Mothering Sunday yeah. on that day. In the United States, in 1908, 1908, there's a lady by name Anna Jarvis from Grantham. Anna Jobis from Grantham, West Virginia, and she began the campaign. Your father and your mother, as the Lord your God 
has commanded you so that you may live long and it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. It's all saying, and a lot of verses in scripture says, honor your father and your mother. So it is absolutely okay to celebrate Mother's Day in the church. Okay. Now the second point. Mother in God. You know, in our traditions, we call Father and God as Father because He has given us the privilege to call Him Abba Father. We call Him Father, gracious God, our Father. The Lord's Prayer says, Our Father. So, we, when we think about God, we always, always think God as Father because that is the Jewish tradition. But God also acts like a mother. That's what the Bible says. The first word that I read in Isaiah, um, chapter uh, 66, verse 13 says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. So God himself says, I will comfort you as a mother comforts you. So God is also a mother. When we call him as father, he is also a mother. And the father, there are aspects of God that we can attribute to the father's side as well as to the mother's side. Let me just give you some examples. The father aspect of God is about expansion. The father wants to joyfully give and give. But the mother aspect of God is about contraction, restriction, focus, and holding back. Father God protects us, and Mother God provides us. Father God conditions us, and Mother God forgives us. Father God controls us. And Father God comfort us. Father God teaches us. And Father God reaches us. Father God gives you grace. And Mother God gives us love. When you are feeling constrained, restricted, held back, it is the Mother aspect of God in all the glorious wisdom holding you back. When I went for an interview, in front of my ordination committee. As soon as I completed my Master's in Divinity from New York Theological Seminary, one of the questions asked was, what do you know, what is the gender of God? That was the question asked. What is the gender of God? I replied to them, we know Jesus Christ came from heaven, we know his son of God, we know that his gender is a male gender. But Father God, though we call him his father, he has aspects of mother, so God doesn't have gender, is, is the first thing, is, is the answer that I reply. So Father God has the aspects of father as well as mother. In mothers in church, a life filled with the beauty of the mother, grace, kindness, and peace, and profound love that we can receive from our father. Let me just say another story uh, happened. There was a boy who went to school. And the teacher sent him back, saying that the child is a dumb guy. He's a slow learner. He cannot do anything to help him. So keep working your house only. This is the answer of the teachers to the parents. Especially the mother 
wrote back to the teacher saying, you do not understand my God, I will teach him myself. And she started post-schooling for him to be a wise man and he became a scientist in later part of his life and his name was Thomas Olga Edison himself who invented electricity. Can you believe that? That's the father's belief made him as a scientist, you know. That depends on the mother's love. And the, the, in God also, he received the aspect of mother. Sometimes father God conditions us, the mother God reaches to us and gives us the peace that we require. That, that's, that, that's the beautiful way uh, of projecting God as mother himself. That's all. So mother gives life and God gives life. Mother sustains her young child's life. The child doesn't know anything. And God sustains the children. Her mother weeps. He believed even Jesus wept in Bible. A mother sacrifices and God sacrificed his only son for you and I to live in this world and not to perish. These are all the evidences that we can even call God as mother. Remember when Jesus, when he came to the world, he did not require a worldly man for his birth, but he required a worldly, worldly mother, a human being, for him to be born. A Spanish proverb says, I would like to finish with this, that an ounce of mother, an ounce of mother is worth a ton of a piece. That's the Spanish uh, proverb. So let us continue to celebrate our mother, he might be alive or not. If they are alive, we have to take care of them and we have to celebrate them. Not only on Mother's Day, but on, on all the other days. So let us teach our children also to honor our mothers. So mothers, you honor your mothers so that your children would see that and honor you. Let us celebrate the motherly aspect of God Himself on this special day, Mother's Day. And once again, I would uh, wish all the mothers, mothers at heart, and mothers to be a happy Mother's Day. The peace of God will have us all. We understand. Clear of us, in Jesus' name. Amen.